Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And what you're going to see over all the news uh, channels this morning is the fact that Japan has now cut rates into negative territory, which is pretty much signaling a currency war, potentially signaling a currency war against China. Uh, obviously, they're saying they're doing it to stimulate the economy, but with all the uh, devaluation of the yuan and then they're trying to increase it and all the turmoil in the stock markets, now what you're seeing is the yen getting exceptionally devalued. We'll be looking at dollar yen in a minute because there have been some incredible moves. One, <laughs> incredible moves in the Japanese stock market, the Japan 225, and two, some very, very impressive moves in, in dollar yen. Huge uh, whip sawing, it was shot up, decreased and went right back up again. Uh, but we'll be looking at that from a technical perspective in a second. But what that means uh, for the wider APAC kind of region is that's Japan signaling very, very clearly that they are willing to do whatever it takes uh, for them to meet their objectives, which politically uh, also has an impact on China. So it'll be very interesting to see what, uh, what China does next as they have to, they might choose that they have to respond to that yen devaluation. Now, what happened before when the Chinese were devaluing the yuan, the yuan uh, a lot just a few weeks ago is that's what caused a lot of um, stock market turmoil, uh, especially in the Chinese stock markets. Now, they've actually increased slightly this morning. Uh, the Japan 25, in fact, is up about 3.5% in itself. But again, it just sets the stage for what are the emerging markets in that part of the world going to do because they've got to deal with, a, with the yuan and Japanese yen to make themselves competitive. That's very much the landscape that we're in. Today also brings with it the CPI data from the Eurozone and also GDP from the US. And uh, Mario Draghi will be looking at that CPI data with much, uh, with much interest, especially as um, it basically means that if it comes in too strong, it'll be very difficult for him then to go ahead and make a, a decision on uh, kind of action by the ECB for QE or cutting rates. If the, if the data is strong, it makes it difficult for him to cut rates. Um, the same for the US. Uh, the US GDP figure probably has got the potential to come out slightly weaker than, than forecast, only because we had some really weak data already come out in the US. Durable goods was pretty awful. Um, and maybe the, uh, the GDP figure is just slightly a bit too punchy, because obviously they make the forecast quite far in advance. And we've already seen a, a little bit weaker data come out of that part of the world. So that's kind of setting the, the stage for today. Uh, Eurozone CPI and US GDP, that's kind of what you want to have your focus on today. Keep your eye on, on dollar yen, that should be quite interesting. And crude oil has been uh, moving that little bit higher as there is rumors, uh, rumors as ever, that of production cuts in OPEC. Lots of talk about uh, Iran, are they interested in cutting or not? Because um, obviously they're going to be flooding the market with 500,000 barrels of oil when they come back online as well. But then they could capture extra market, uh, extra market share if they don't do that. Nobody really wants to cut production, but everybody's feeling the pain from the low prices as well. But it's worth noting that crude oil prices have actually jumped up uh, more than, I think it's maybe about 21 to 25 percent from the lows that they hit uh, late last week. So that gives you an idea of what to expect. Let's go ahead and start things off with a look at the US 30. So uh, you can get an idea of the moves that we've seen. Uh, most global stock markets are up higher this morning with the US 30 targeting, uh, potentially targeting 6,200 and change there as well, 270. We're at the top end of the range. 86% of CMC markets clients are currently short. The technicals are relatively neutral at this stage. We haven't been above this level uh, for, for most of the uh, the start of January until we've actually been selling off. So it'll be interesting to see if we can get a short-term technical breakout above 16,270. And then if we do, that has to get above that 21 period of SMA as well. Then moving on to the UK 100, uh, trying for the third time, and maybe successfully this time, it's actually at the top end of that range right now, trying to break through uh, 6,021. We're above the 21 period SMA. We're a good bit away from the 55 period. We had a crossover on the MACD quite a number of sessions ago, the other technicals are relatively neutral. 65% of CMC Marcus clients are currently long. Moving on to Japan 225, and this actually dropped 600 points to then, uh, sorry, jumped 600 points, sold off 1,000 points, then to uh, increase 1,000 points again. In fact, if I just stick this on, let's just say 10 minutes, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, you can just see that massive move to the upside, massive huge sell off, and then massive move to the upside again. Uh, huge whip sawing action. Uh, dollar yen is not that much different, to be honest. So lots and lots of volatility. Uh, we did have a technical break above 17,689. It's retreated down below that just now. It's above the 21 period SMA, but if we can close above 17,691, that would be an interesting technical move. 84% of CMC market clients are currently short, so they're anticipating further weakness. 
So moving on to dollar yen, it's been in a sideways moving market for seeming what seems to be forever. Uh, again, look at the size of this candle; it's huge. And just for fun, let's go in the 10 minutes interval, and uh, you can see the massive move to the upside, huge, massive sell-off, and then a, a, a move not quite uh, hitting these tips right here. But it's been a tough. If you've been uh, long or short a uh, dollar yen overnight, that's been a really tough pair to trade. Uh, really, really tough. So we're trading above both uh, moving averages at the moment. The technicals are otherwise neutral. Longer-term potential resistance: 123 spot 60. If US GDP comes out quite strong today, this could be an interesting one to keep looking at. 56% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. Moving on to crude oil, West Texas. Um, you can just see that, that, that move we've gone from 27 up to 33 and change. We're away from the session highs from yesterday, but top end of the range today. Other technicals relatively neutral. We're trading between two ranges right now. 69% uh, of CMC clients are short, anticipating further weakness. Um, but to be fair, you could get all the way up to 35 before you hit a potential resistance. Um, and if we do get a sell-off, 31.50 could definitely be a, a, a potential support level to look out for. And that also comes with the 21 period SMA. Moving on to gold, uh, gold retreated again, uh, uh, just below $1,110. 74% of CMT market clients are currently long on this right now. A lot of volatility, even just today. We have been much lower, we have been a little bit higher. So kind of a spinning top formation that we've got currently. Uh, gold's not really that interesting to me right now. Dollar yen's way, way more exciting. Um, having a look at your dollar, we're still potentially in the symmetrical triangle formation that we drew there yesterday. So we don't want to really trade within the triangle. You want to wait for a break on either side. Seems your clients are off the same opinion. 54% are currently long. The other technicals are neutral. And then finishing up with GBP USD, 84% of CMC market clients are short. And you're going to see from these candles, um, this could be kind of interesting to look at as well. If the GDP figures come out better than expected in the US later on today. Um, candle yesterday was decent, uh, bullish engulfing pattern, uh, spinning top at the moment, unable to break through that 21 period SMA. And then if I just have a quick look at the economic calendar, uh, to see uh, the timing, this is UK time right here. You've got the uh, Eurozone CPI at 10 and then US GDP at 130 and finishing things up with the University of Michigan Sentiment Index as well. Um, for the weekend, no Chinese data, just double checking. And then Monday, oh, you do have some Chinese data at 1 a.m. Uh, you've got loads of PMI data from market, uh, personal income and uh, PMI data from the US to start off your Monday and a brand new month. So guys, best of luck with your trading and uh, join me again on Monday to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and enjoy your weekend.